watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories right now. Topping the list for us tonight, we are learning more after a deadly plane crash at an East Tennessee airfield. It happened around 12.15 this afternoon at the Colonel Tommy C. Steiner Airfield near Jacksboro. It was a single-engine plane, and only the pilot was on board. The Campbell County Mayor did confirm the pilot did not survive the crash. His name, Jimmy Cole. He was 69 and had flown planes for over 40 years. Jimmy was the oldest of 12. He has one daughter and was engaged. We spoke with his brother, Daryl Cole, who says Jimmy loved flying since he was a teen, and it was one of their favorite things to do together. We flew together several times, and I think, I think that was the best, the best flights I've ever had. And the best flights I ever had was with him. I got 2,000 feet above the mountain. It was amazing. It was totally amazing. I got to go up, fly above his glider. <laughs> then he laughed and came above me. And it was really, it was really neat, man, to be in the air with him. He was a special guy, man. <laughs> he is a special guy. Federal Aviation Administration stated they, along with the National Transportation Board, will be conducting the investigation. The NTSB is expected to be on scene either late today or early tomorrow to begin documenting the scene. Of course, we'll bring you new information as the process moves along. Next now on the Big 7, Knoxville Area Transit, also known as CAT, is making some big changes to its routes due to a shortage of workers. Those changes went into effect today. Now, we first brought this to you, uh, to your attention back in July, where the Knoxville Transportation Authority approved the CAT service reductions. Those with CAT say they are continuing to feel the effects of COVID with the worker shortage and actually have fewer employees now than they did in the middle of the pandemic. And although CAT is short staffed, they are trying to make sure their riders are able to get to and from work. What we really tried to do was be as strategic as we could about where those cuts were. You know, we looked at when are people riding the most, um, how can we, um, how can we make things the least inconvenient. CAT is partnering with Knox County CAC Transit to provide work-related transportation. Passengers are asked to call CAC at least a day ahead of time to check availability. CAT says they are actively working to hire to get their schedules back to normal. If you need more information on schedule changes or would like to apply to work for CAT, we have a link to that information for you. Just go to WATE.com. Next on our list, we're learning details about an arrest at Christian Academy of Knoxville's Friday night football game. According to the Knox County Sheriff's Office, 18-year-old Aiden Eldridge is accused of having an assault-style rifle on school property. We're told authorities got a tip that Eldridge, quote, wasn't in his right mind and was headed to the school to confront a former teacher he, quote, had problems with. That tip prompted officers to search the CAK campus. They found Eldridge's pickup in the parking lot. We're told a weapon was in the floorboard with 29 rounds in the magazine. After the discovery, Eldridge was arrested at the football stadium. In addition to charges of carrying a weapon on school property, he is accused of driving on a suspended license. Now, we checked Eldridge's criminal history here in Knox County. Court records show he's also suspected of possessing a handgun while under the influence at the Knoxville Expo Center earlier this month. We'll, of course, continue to follow this case. Next up, a Harriman man has now been sentenced to life in prison plus 10 years in a child exploitation case. The Department of Justice tells a 67-year-old Kent Boer, a disbarred criminal defense attorney, used his phone and social media platform to communicate with an undercover officer who was posing as a 14-year-old girl. The DOJ says he went on to meet in person. That's when, well, we're told he was arrested. Now, Boer was, already, had, was uh, already a sex offender. His original case, dating back to 2012, was connected with another sexual exploitation case, one dealing with a 15-year-old girl. Next on the Big 7, a new law went into effect in July requiring hospitals to report fatal drug overdoses to law enforcement. CDC says Tennessee currently has the fifth highest overdose death rate in the country. Right now, the State Department of Health lists counties with the highest number, including Shelby, Davidson, Knox, Hamilton, Rutherford, and Montgomery. State law already required hospitals to report things like stabbings or suffocations to law enforcement, but the new law adds fatal overdose to that list. However, there is some concern that if it were all overdoses, people would be apprehensive and worried about being arrested. It's also important to note that there are a lot of other good phone numbers that you could call. 
It doesn't have to be the police. It doesn't have to be the emergency room. There are places like Samaritan who have been dealing with issues like addiction since 1964. We're a phone call away. We'd love to help people before an overdose occurs. Dr. Lasko says rehab centers are there to help before and after an overdose. If someone is experiencing an overdose, call 911 and administer Narcan if you have it. Next on the 7, after using the same turnout gear for 20 years, the Townsend Area Volunteer Fire Department is saying out with the old and in with the new. Reporter Paige Weeks explains how this new gear all came about. Bo, this new turnout gear was a major project for the Townsend Area Volunteer Fire Department, and it almost didn't happen. According to Chief Don Stallions, a lot of the department's funding comes from fundraisers and events around town. But when the COVID-19 pandemic shut everything down and caused the cancellations of several events, opportunities to raise money for this new gear became slim. But thankfully, that changed about eight months ago. It definitely uh, uh, perked everybody up and in a sense of pride as well. I mean, we, we got really nice gear. We, we got top of the line gear and so I think they're proud of it. You can compare that new gear to the old right now on WATE.com. Reporting in Townsend, Page Weeks, WATE, six on your side. Bo. After hours on the launch pad, NASA has scrubbed the first attempt of its Artemis 1 mission. The unmanned liftoff was called off after a last minute cascade of issues ending in unexplained engine trouble. The combination of not being able to uh, get the uh, engine three chilled down and then the uh, vent valve uh, issue that they saw at the inner tank really caused us to pause today and, and we felt like we needed a little, little more time. Plan was for the SLS, the most powerful rocket in the world, to carry the Orion capsule into orbit to test it for astronauts who will be aboard hopefully in 2024, signaling the beginning of what NASA hopes will be a sustained presence on the moon and beyond. NASA is still eyeing Friday as a launch window. In the meantime, crews will return to the launch pad tomorrow to begin to fix some of today's issues.